Hi, it's Chicken Bone John here, and today we're going to be showing you how to turn one of our plain boxes for making cigar box guitars, and then you can end up with a product like that. Okay, let's get on the bench and see how we do this. Okay, just a few tips on putting the decoration labels on. It's best to do all your cutouts in advance. So as you can see, we've got the pickup, sound holes, jack and uh, a volume. I've got it cut out for a through neck. And we found the best way of doing this is to use tight bond high glue. We have used the regular tight bond. Uh, it, it's a, a little bit wetter and what you really want to do is keep these labels as dry as possible so they don't wrinkle up. They're properly photo lithoed onto, I think it's 135 gram stock with a satin finish. You don't really want to get them wet. Um, they'll start cockling and wrinkling and you want it to, to get this as flat as possible. So, a few things. Just make sure when you put it on the box, you're going to get a sort of even border all the way around. And in fact, as you can see, if we line it up bottom and left on that, that's going to give us about an even border all the way around. OK, so what we do, we're going to use this stuff and a roller. I mean, that's a that's a ink, ink printing roller. That's a regular wallpaper seam roller with a soft uh, sleeve on it either of those are fine so we're just going to put a little bit and the key thing is not to overdo this you only just need to get this tacky you don't want to get the thing wet so can i'm just putting a smear i can always add some more and the best thing to do is you roller it you want this rollered on so that it's totally, totally uniform. Just hold that up to the light. So that looks like we're about right. So you can see there's no there's no really, not really any marks. So I'm going to take my artwork and I'd already figured out I really want these two edges uh, left and bottom. So I'm just going to start it on the corner, put it on the bottom edge and just steadily work that up. If you get this wet and rub it you will abrade the paper. So the best thing to do is to put another sheet of paper on the top and just rub that down ever so gently. Then you can take another clean roller. You know you want to if you've got any wrinkles or bumps, you want to work centre to the outside. Be careful when you're working around these, your cutouts, that you you want it round down to the edges, but you don't want to force it into them. So that's, I can see in the light, I've got a little air bubble there. So you just need to take a bit of time making sure and I say check under you know check either go to the window or under a good light to make sure you've got no air bubbles or wrinkles and it's all down right to the edge. Right, we'll do another one using the ordinary tight bond. You do have to take a bit more care with this because it, it sort of comes out a little bit wetter and uh, more viscous, I think, than the, the hide glue. So again, I'm going to line that up and I think it's going to work out about best left and bottom. But just double check 
just double check that you've got it even before you commit. So I'm looking from my border, I've got about I've got about 18 mil there. Yeah, that's about 16, so I want to maybe just back that off. Yeah, so I'm showing about 16, 17 mil there. And that's showing 15. That's showing about 12. So I just want to edge that down a tiny bit. If I just crease that, because that means when I put my when I put my borders on, it's going to look about even. And I don't want to, I don't want to be covering up any of this detail. So just take a little bit of care to do that. OK, so we're going to be using that one and we'll use the regular type bond. But be, be very sparing with it. We've tried these a few different times. Uh, we tried doing it the way we normally put paper labels on, by wetting the label itself and then putting the glue on, which is a classic way of sort of stretching paper onto things. But we found with this, with this particular paper stock, it didn't work. It went very, very weak. Although it's a nice weighty paper, it doesn't like getting wet. Just holding it up to the light to see if I've got any bare patches and indeed I have got a few bare patches I don't want any bare patches obviously because it's more likely to get like air bubbles and wrinkles and so forth okay so we've done that you just pop it on there you can usually just this there's, there's enough leeway to shuffle it a tiny wee bit you know and you can you can double check your measurements while it's on here so yeah i've got about 14 mil there about 16 about 16 17 there that's okay and i'm just gonna Smooth it out with my fingers. Make sure, obviously, your fingers have not got any glue. It's probably a good idea to have a clean, wet J cloth or something like that. Now, I can see this is, it's more prone, this, this glue, to wrinkling up because it tends to wet the paper a bit. So you might not get quite the same bang on flat result. You can just burnish that down gently very gently so you get all the edges down and i'll say work from the center out if there's any air bubbles you want to be working them from the center out towards the edges here we've got our box which has got the label stuck on it's all nice and dry and we with a few basic tools you know we've got a glue brush a couple of uh, fine files ruler scalpel pair of scissors damp cloth we're going to get this finished up so that we've got a product something like that at the end of it first thing we're going to do is trim the edges off And that's all we do just run the knife along the edge of the box you might need to do those as well and then we've got the cutout so open your box up and you can see where you've got your cutouts and you can simply put the scalpel in and run them out don't worry about being too close to the edge because We can trim those off. 
okay same with you with these circular holes i mean we can start them it may be easier to do that and then just run the scalpel around that hole find out where i started that When you do this, you want to make sure the glue is absolutely dry. I can see where these cutouts are, so I'm just going to carefully go around there, see if we can find the other one. Yep, yeah, there we go. So you can do this from either the inside or the outside. And then we can just clean that off. Same with that, you can just very lightly get into all the corners. You know, you might want to just use this flat file for that. You know, or you can also go in just with a piece of sandpaper, that's a piece of 120, so 120 or 240 just to get that all nice and clean. So just a little bit of clean up and our box has got all the cut, uh, cutouts trimmed. The next thing we want to do is to get our edging strips cut and stuck on. So it's really easy, just a ruler and a scalpel, got a proper Swan Morton scalpel. Cut the two white bands off the edge. It's printed like that to make sure you do get full width for each of these strips. And there's eight of these on a sheet. So don't cock up cutting this out. Can you see? You've got a double thickness and I'm cutting down the middle part of that border. There we go. And just repeat. That's going to go across the width of there, so we're just going to trim those to length, like so. We'll do another one. We'll just not. We'll not do the whole bit. It takes too long. Just trim those. They're going to go on there. So obviously you'll have four like that, and then when we come to the width. Just going to, you know, I'm just folding it there. So that's going to be my width. And on the front, we're going to mitre them. So we're just going to snip. You don't have to do this. But we're going to do that. We'll do another one. Keep, you want to keep that because that's going to go on the short edges. So we just trim that. And then on your edge, we're going to do this. So all your spare bits. So obviously you're going to have four of those for each of those edges. And obviously, so you're going to have four of those for each of those edges. And you just want to, if you fold it, Like that, it's just a bit easier to snip the corner off. I don't do it right to the edge, but then that's going to do that. Now that's a wee bit long, so just make sure these are right. You don't want to be folding. You don't want to be folding them over. That's better. That's all there is to it. Now you do need to make work, work cleanly. So you don't get glue where you don't want it. So we'll just start showing you how this works. Use the same sort of glue, whatever you put that, whether you use the tight bond or the tight bond liquid hide. Just put a bead of glue down there. Get you want enough so it's going to, so it's going to stick it down firmly. Okay. 
make sure it's covered right to the edge and it will go a wee bit soft so be careful you don't tear it you know i'm using that the center of the stripe to line up with the edge of the box i thought you can see you may be able to see i've got a tiny bit of glue on there so just put that on fold it Press it down. I can feel I've got a bit of glue on my hand, so I'm just going to wipe that off. And then you can, with a damp cloth or sponge, just smooth that down and get any glue out. What you don't want to do is to get that wet and, re and sort of rub it hard because you can damage the print. When we're going to do these, we take our shorter strip, a little bead of glue, so we're using the liquid hide here, but whether whether using this or the tight bond or similar sort of work, wood glue, we're making sure we've got glue all the way across but not too much. And you can see the mitres there. Offer it up to the edge of the box. We'll say this um, liquid hide glue will leave a bit of a mark if you don't clean the, clean the squeeze up out. It's not perfectly clear. Okay, when this is all dry, you'll need to cut that out, obviously. Yep. And also, once we've got the edges on here, Wait until everything's dry and then just go through, down through that, split that so you can open the box up. You can see, you just need to be careful there. It's beginning to ruckle up. So when you go round everything, just double check everything is down tight. Okay, we've got all the long edges on here now. We're just going to do these few short bits and pieces. So all we're going to do for that, we've got it all mitered, it's all folded, ready to go on. As ever, bit of glue, make sure you cover it all. You know, do clean, you know, clean up as you go along. And that's it. That's all we do. Make sure it's all centred up nicely. Press it in. Make sure all the corners are down. They can lift. Don't worry because once you've got it all cut, you know, or, uh, fin once you've got it all cut and finished, you can always just sneak in there with a little bit of extra glue. once you've done once it's all dry you can just knife through these with a sharp scalpel and that's it I've done that without that being totally dry I'd recommend you wait until this goes totally dry before this because it's very very easy to tear it when it's damp so I don't recommend doing that when it's damp likewise here you can run your knife through the box joint at the corner And then with the corners cut, you should be ready to start building. You know, we've got our cutouts, we've got our blocks already glued in. Everything's ready to drop your components in there, put your neck in. And that's it. So if you've taken your time and a little bit of care, 
you should end up with a box that's looking something like that, ready to make into a beautiful guitar of your own like this. Okay, I hope you've uh, found that useful. Keep checking us out on uh, YouTube and on Facebook and at www.chickenbonejohn.com. Bye for now.